unlocking the secrets of an ancient, nearly forgotten language. There are clues in the chants of a church congregation. And in the chugging sounds of this outdated machine. Seeming to gasp for air. As it works overtime to preserve not just the language, but a country's link to its distant past. Welcome to Ethiopia. Welcome to Inside Africa. He sits in relative darkness and complete silence. His hand is steady, his mind intensely focused. There's an artistry to this man's work, but also a technical side, an attention to detail that is essential. He's a merry getter, which is similar to a monk in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. His job is to preserve ancient manuscripts by meticulously rewriting them as they originally appeared in the all but forgotten language of Ge'ez. Ge'ez means free. It is a language of the free people. Dr. Ayel Bakeri is an author and historian. He says part of the significance of Ge'ez is that it's an ancient language native to Ethiopia that's still used in script today. Ethiopia remains the only country in Africa that has never been colonized. The reason for not being colonized, in part, is a result of the depth and knowledge of the history that the people have, their sense of identity. But for all his years on research on Ge'ez, Bakeri has never had a hands-on experience like this one at the Patriarchate Museum in Addis Ababa. So we have a traditional scribe here. These tools were used as far back as the third century to scrub and soften animal skin into parchment. That's what we see over there. Yes, it is mm -hmm. the material mm -hmm. in which they make it so the skin of goat mm -hmm. or sheep mm -hmm. in order to make a soft. So the scribe is involved in preparing the ink. Exactly. He's yeah. also involved in preparing the skin. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. after that he started scribing. Before Bakeri and his museum guide leave, the Merry Getter has a gift. Bakeri's name written in Ge'ez. There is telling. Dr. Ayala Bakari. But I'm the same meal. This is beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. 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 Most researchers who've done work on the writing system, that's how they characterize it. They say elegant. The fact researchers even have examples of Ge'ez is somewhat remarkable and accredits the work of these holy men called Abbas. They stay uh, here for mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. just in keeping and arranging uh, the ancient parchments mm -hmm. of the Ethiopian church. That includes writings from the time of Jesus and earlier. The script, we can definitely say, we can trace it back to what we call pre-Aksumite period. So when we talk about pre-Aksumite period, we're talking about at least 1500 to 1000 BC, during that time period. Yes, oh, the beautiful picture. Yeah, it's Researchers believe most Ethiopians spoke Ge'ez until somewhere between the 10th and 12th centuries AD. Since then, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church has been a guardian of the language. A great collection of manuscripts here, right? Could you please tell me what these manuscripts are? Uh, manuscripts are uh, prepared from a uh, skin of goat and the sheep. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, here we have uh, an ancient parchment mm -hmm. which is written by ancient fathers of the Ethiopian church. Mm -hmm. Few people, even experts like Bakeri, ever get this close to such history. Would you mind if I can hold it? I will be very careful. You can this hold is, it. This is so delicate. Yeah, yeah keep it careful. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll be holding it carefully. This is the first time that I 
had something yeah, in my yeah. hand, wow, an nice. ancient manuscript. This is beautiful. So what's this hole right here? Just uh, when they slaughter the, the sheep or mm -hmm. goat, mm -hmm. maybe the knife, Mm -hmm. Maybe the knife, well, the knife the, mistakenly yeah, cuts the, the skin, the right? Skin, uh, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. But still, they, they, they manage to use it, right? Yeah, they manage to use it. They uh, manage to make a folio out of it, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the parchment is held up incredibly well. This is from the 11th century AD. So these are actually not just simply religious manuscripts. These are also uh, secular manuscripts. Right? Secular they, manuscripts. Tell us about the, they tell us about the history of Ethiopia. The history of Ethiopia, about medicine, as you said yeah. earlier, about yeah. medicine, about philosophy. And literature too. Literature too, exactly, yeah. yeah. The pages give insight into a developed Ethiopian culture that some historians say rivaled societies in Rome and Greece, but for unknown reasons vanished around the same time most people stopped speaking the language, between the 10th and 12th centuries. Thanks to these writings, we see how the people monitored stars, how they used the calendar to track time, and how they worshipped. This is a very important reference point to our history. It is also important documents that help us connect to the rest of the world. That's how significant this place is. The writing system is different from the other writing systems, especially from Latin, from Greek writing, because the Greek or the Latin is alphabetic, you know? It's a kind of writing system where the vowels and the consonants are separate. But as in our case, we have a syllabic system, meaning for every sound in the language, we have characters. Touching a piece of his country's history has only strengthened Bakari's opinion that the little-known language of Ge'ez is key to understanding Ethiopia. So thank you so much for showing me this. This is a special treat. Yeah, I highly appreciate it. It's not only one of the foundations of our nation, but that ancient tradition is continuous. It has been kept from generation to generation until the present time. This machine is helping continue the tradition. Coming up, we examine why this old-fashioned press plays such an important role today in preserving Ge'ez.